Right, so I want you to imagine that you're sat at a computer trying to design the next best orally available, orally available drug for a particular disease. As you're in the lab making chemicals, making compounds, at some point you will have to think is this molecule the right shape and the right type of structure to be delivered in an orally available manner and so wouldn't it be nice if there was a list or, or, or a set of rules which allowed you to predict if a molecule, a new molecule is going to be orally available as a drug and so can be taken as a as a tablet or a pill. Well there is such a set of rules these are known as Lipinski's rules or more uh, colloquially as the rule of five and I'll explain why that is in a moment. So this set of rules I'm going to put rules in inverted commas because they're not strict rules and must be completely obeyed all the time they're more um, a rule of thumb or a set of guidelines. So what are they? Well having studied a whole range of market market based drugs which are already available and that list was fine tuned it turned out that the vast majority of already available drugs had a molecular weight which was less than 500 grams per mole they had a number of hydrogen bond donors which were less than or equal to five and remember we said we looked at hydrogen bond donors in the last video in non-covalent interactions if you don't know what they are then go back and have a look at that video we also discussed hydrogen bond acceptors and according to Lipinski's rule of five if you have less than or equal to ten then that's good and also you need a log p of less than plus five or this could be a calculated log p of less than five so you'll notice that each of these values is a multiple of five hence the name rule of five or Lipinski's rule of five uh, there are only four rules so don't let that confuse you it's just that they are multiples of five if you're not familiar with the what log P is, this P stands for partition coefficient and really describes, uh, and that's P, but it's just a log scale where P is equal to the concentration of your drug in water or some kind of aqueous system or buffer divided by the concentration of your drug in octanol. So here you have an aqueous system and an organic system and depending on how easily your drug partitions between those two layers gives you a value of P and then on a, on a logarithmic scale Lipinski's rule says that log p needs to be less than 5. So if these parameters are all obeyed in a, in a particular drug then it's a, there's a very good chance that that drug will be orally available in the human body. So you can take the tablet, you can, you can take the drug as a tablet and it will pass through uh, your stomach and be orally available be aqueous soluble and be able to get to its site of action. So let's have a look at an, ex an example. Um, I want to look at acyclovir. Ok, 
Okay, so acyclovir here, it's a, an antiviral drug. It's orally available. It's taken by mouth and its structure looks like this. Okay, so that's its chemical structure. We know it's already available because it's a common drug. What about its properties? Well, if you add up all of the carbons, hydrogens, oxygens and nitrogens, this molecule has a molecular weight of 225. That's obviously less than 500, and so that particular rule is satisfied. The number of hydrogen bond donors, well, as I mentioned in the, in the last video, this is to do with um, usually oxygen or nitrogen atoms which have a hydrogen attached. So really, if we go back and define that, you can say that this is really the sum of your OHs and your NHs, plus possibly SH, but most drugs just contain oxygen and nitrogen um, as a hydrogen bond donors. By the same token, the hydrogen bond acceptor is typically oxygen or nitrogen. So if we use that information, let's look at the number of hydrogen bond donors. Well, there is one here, and there is one, oh, sorry, two here, and one here. So we've got one, two, three, four, so our number of hydrogen bond donors is four, and again, that's less than five. So that's a tick, it agrees with the rule. Number of hydrogen bond acceptors, again it's just the sum of the oxygens and nitrogens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again 8 is less than 10 so that obeys the rule. And the log P of acyclovir is minus 0.09, again that's less than 5 so that agrees with the rule. So a cyclovir agrees with all the rules and it's not surprising therefore that it's already available. The vast majority of all already available drugs meet at least three of Apinsky's rules um, but there are many examples which don't. For example natural products with very complicated structures they tend not to meet his rules. Um, some drugs have transport proteins to help them across cell membranes so they don't meet the rules and there are other examples too, it's only a guide but nevertheless when that's all you've got to go on if you're designing new drugs then it's a good guide to help you make sure that you're not introducing functional groups or too much mass or too much lipophilicity to allow your drug to get to its site of action via an already available route.